r slash ask reddit. What is your 2018 video game recommendation of the year? This thread is proof that ask reddit is a better gaming sub than r a slash gaming. To be fair, anything's a better gaming sub than r slash gaming. I had a couple pork sliders for lunch that were better gaming subs than r slash gaming. Dead Cells. There's a reason a little roguelike side-scroller took best action game at the Game Awards. It's because it's amazing and addictive. It was so good that two people said the exact same thing. Except one got fired. Can someone explain this comment? Root in 2 in Cowboy Shoot in 2. Probably my favorite game of all time. I'm going to say Divinity. Original Sin 2. It's a different style of game from most big titles, but is one of the most fleshed out games on the market and has a great story, fun combat, true decision making, and phenomenal replayability. So much replayability, but I haven't even gotten out of the fort yet. Oh yeah, it's definitely a long game, no doubt. But once you finish, you'll just want to play again immediately. I think it took me 108 hours to beat my first playthrough. Beat Saber. If you have Veer Gold. Gah, had to scroll so far down to find this. Truly, a life changing game. Literally gets you fit while being too much fun for words to describe. It really makes you feel like Beat Saber. AU slash Dexited Super Mario Brothers 2 Baby Still the King after all these years. I'm a millionaire. Factorio. You misspelled Cracktorio. I've currently 1200 hours logged. Send help please. And send some iron. Doing a C block run and really low on the stuff. Hitman 2 looks like it's gonna be a sleeper hit again. It's an amazing game. But the learning curve is a bit steep for people who doesn't like to play the same level multiple times. But once you figured out the mechanics, you really feel like a hitman. Best advice I can give to anyone looking to get this game. It's not really an action game. It's an assassination-themed puzzle game. Slay the Spire. Really great game that scratches the deck-building slash card game itch in a pretty novel way. Also doesn't completely rob you by making you pay hundreds of dollars to unlock cards. My only complaint is I'm not a fan of some of the stuff they've added, like the heart. Feels like it limits the number of winnable decks too heavily. This is my game of the year as well, and I've got to say I disagree with this. You can still win with practically any deck archetype against the heart. With just some minor tuning changes with the heart matchup in mind, think keeping Thorn Pots less air miles per arises on AoE, valuing good block cards slightly higher, improving your setup time for combo-oriented stuff. But more importantly, the heart is a completely optional extra layer of difficulty. Once I was at least semi-reliably beating Act 3 on Ascension 20, the fun sort of dropped off and I felt like an additional challenge was needed. The heart scratches that itch, but you don't need to take down the heart to progress to at 20 or continue improving your skills. Haven't seen anyone else suggest it, so Pavlo Var. It's like Sesco in VR, and it's really fun. Hey, we're two loving Pavlo. Three -er for the gunplay, Pavlo for the multiplayer shenanigans. Garfield can't. Got 20 hours and climbing on that game. Into the Breach. It came out early 2018, so I just hope people haven't forgotten about this one. It's from the developers of FDL. I personally never really got into FDL, partly because of the randomness of it all. IB is very different and has almost no random elements. Going through the game doesn't need to take too long if you go for two island victory, but the game is just so fun and satisfying to play. All of the different squads work completely differently and going for those challenges to unlock more squads just works. I fell in love with some of the squads I never knew I would like because I had to try them out and get those coins. I second this. Think of it as chess meets Advance Wars. It definitely doesn't have the replayability of FDL, but it's still amazing and excellent. The squads and missions are unique and varied. I helped Vita test it so I can personally attest it so I can personally attest that it's completely bug-free. Subnautica. It's beautiful, sometimes terrifying, and has a surprisingly great story. I am deathly afraid of open water. Is this game for me? It's actually really good for exposure therapy. I'm afraid of the dark depths, but just forcing yourself to plunge hundreds of meters down into the ocean is terrifying, but you do eventually overcome that uneasiness. God of War, for sure. Spider-Man. 
The story is great. Art style is really nice. Good soundtrack. I really felt like Spider-Man. May it go down in history as my fastest platinum ever. Still need to take the plunge on the Del C. Smash Ultimate. My man, this game convinced me to buy a Switch. Fallout 3. I'm behind. Very, very behind. Slash R slash Patient Gamers. If you haven't seen it yet. Yes, as folks at R slash Patient Gamers would really welcome you there. It's a fun sub in which being behind is seen as a good thing. You get to play fully patched games, free from novelty bias, and discover old hidden gems. Return of the Obra Din. It's a murder mystery where the game is puzzling out what happened to the crew of a ship that turns up after being missing for years. The music could use some work, but on the whole, it's a very solid game. I thought the music was one of the best parts of this game. I'm easily scared, so I appreciated the upbeat, jaunty soundtrack instead of like a dark, terrifying one. 1000% Celeste. I've historically never been a big platformer fan, but picked this game up on a whim. 100% agree. Such an incredible game. Half the rooms, especially the strawberries, gave me a portal vibe where you have to solve the puzzle and then get your fingers to execute the solution. Hollow Knight. Best platformer I've ever played, and I've been playing since Mario 1. Yakuza 0. Awesome story, fun gameplay. A lot of games you find yourself in situations where you go, why the F would my character say or do that? But in Yakuza, everyone acts logically. I played it right after Horizon Zero Dawn and liked Yakuza far better. Yakuza Zero was definitely a great experience. Not sure I'd play it twice though. Got sick of hunting for sake and alcohol the second time around. Red Dead Redemption 2. I love this game so much. The story is wonderful. The set pieces are fun, the musical cues are seriously top-notch, and there's as much content as you really want to bite off. It took me the better part of a month and a half to finally finish it off. It's not a perfect game. I really dislike how they handled the challenge system, for example, and I understand some of the criticisms of it, but man, I loved the hell out of the game.